Sodom and Gomorrah. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Lot, his wife and daughters, all fled from the terrible destruction of Sodom. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Wicked men were punished by the Lord in a divine judgment of fire. The intense heat consumed the wicked cities and their inhabitants. But Lot's wife looked back toward her beloved Sodom, violating the angel's command, and was thus turned into a pillar of salt. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. The Bible tells us the cities were in the plain of Jordan, which is the area surrounding the Dead Sea, and it was once a beautiful, lush area. At 1,300 feet below sea level, this is the lowest place on earth, a very hot and desolate region that was cursed by God because of the sins of the people. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Flavius Josephus, the first century Jewish historian, tells us, there are still the remainders of that divine fire, and the traces of the five cities are still to be seen. Popular thought has it that the cities were later covered by the waters of the Dead Sea, but if Josephus could see the cities in his day, then we should be able to view them also, as the water level has, if anything, receded since his time. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, even unto Lasha. The biblical description tells us the cities were spread out, forming a line along the Canaanite border, not grouped together in one area, as some may think. Driving along the coastal highway of the Dead Sea in Israel, one can soon see peculiar formations that are of a lighter color than the surrounding terrain. These are the ashen cities, destroyed by the wrath of God. These cities were consumed by intense flames, a supernatural heat that was directed by the hand of God. Today there is ash that is of lighter color than the surrounding mountains and terrain. As mentioned in the Bible, this is a desolate area where nothing grows. Inspecting the formations closely, one can see structures containing man-made elements, such as 90-degree angles. Even though the buildings were consumed by the fire, the remaining ash in these cities is comprised of a heavier material due to the inclusion of brimstone or sulfur and still retains some of the original shapes of man-made structures. This stunning structure stands out as a singular formation with four sides surrounded by a deep moat. We move in closer to inspect the unusual features evident on the side of the formation. On the side of the structure, this swirling pattern is different from any type of sedimentary rock or soil that would normally contain horizontal, even layers. These swirling designs were also seen in other ashen formations in the cities. This is evidence of extreme heat, up to 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, where thermal ionization occurs, when the electrons repel and attract, forming these unusual swirling designs. In Lot's day, this area was a swirling cauldron of death and destruction, rained down from the Lord in heaven. Strange anomalies can be seen here, such as these fragile layers of material which disintegrate when touched. 
The limestone buildings in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were totally transformed into ash by the consuming fire of the Lord. Evidence of this destruction is revealed in the white gypsum anomalies in the area, including unusual shapes of chalk-like material, which is not found in other parts of the country. Even layers of white and gray material can also be seen, comprising gypsum and ash. At the time of Elijah on Mount Carmel, the Lord sent down a superheated fire from heaven, consuming the stone altar and sacrifice, turning them into ashes. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. When God unleashes a consuming fire, it will turn stone into ashes. At the perimeter of this city, one can see this amazing Sphinx still standing today. It was a pagan symbol positioned at the edge of town and was thought to protect the inhabitants from harm. The Sphinx stands alone as a singular structure with a defined shape. This particular Sphinx has an obvious demarcation between its base and the soil below it, another sign of a man-made structure placed on top of the soil. Later, we will see another Sphinx. From a higher level, a large section of gypsum has fallen down here. It clearly exhibits the alternating layers of white ash that is calcium sulfate, gray ash that is calcium carbonate. One can also find loose or powdery ash that is quite thick and has been deposited next to the formations. The ash is made up of calcium carbonate and calcium sulfate which comes from the limestone buildings and the brimstone mixing together during the fire. In the formations themselves, some material can be gently raked off the surface with the slightest touch. Looking down the city streets, one can notice man-made shapes which are not found in nature. Here we see a building with square sides or 90 degree angles. From the opposite side, we can see the same symmetrical structure and man-made angles. We can see the remains of walls that extended outward at 90 degree angles from the main structure. Once again, further evidence of man-made construction. Here we can see square windows that are visible in the walls of the structures, which give us a view of the past. Scanning the city for signs of prior habitation, we can see in the foreground a tower of cylindrical design positioned at the edge of the city. The remains have suffered greatly during 3,500 years of wind and rain erosion. Even still, there is the appearance here of streets and man-made structures. Here in the foreground, we have a conical shape resting on a raised area. A short distance away, we see another similar shape. As we pan across the city, we can see in the distance an arched doorway that exhibits a symmetrical shape even to this day. And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. More anomalies are found in the cities, in this case, we have a large hardened clump of material that we broke open, revealing layers of previously heated material, including gypsum crystals created by the combination of limestone and sulfur. 
From the intense heat, various objects were melted in the cities. Here we have some material that was boiling on top, while the remainder of the substance pooled at the bottom, creating a solid base. A very unusual find here, but just another strange anomaly not found in other areas of the country. Here is another example of some type of substance that was melted from the extreme heat that God rained down from above. Resting on the ground, we find an unusual layer of gypsum crystals. Underneath the crystals is a layer of white gypsum, then gray ash, all of which was created by the great conflagration of heat, which consumed these sinful cities along the Dead Sea. Once again, we find more gypsum, this time in a circular formation of crystals, all radiating outward. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. Brimstone. Our first sample was found here having been washed down from a higher location. This is the heavenly marker left behind, which proves the sites to be the real Sodom and Gomorrah. Ron Wyatt was the original discoverer of these cities in 1989, and he now describes the brimstone found here. Okay, we're down at Sodom and Gomorrah still. Right in front of you, you see some unusual looking spots on this, uh, shall we say, layer of ash. It's not stone, it's ash. Now we'll move in for a close-up of this. And you can see that they're kind of circular shaped uh, places. Now what we have found, and we'll move in a little closer here, is that inside each of these is sulfur. Uh, that is in most of them. Now the ones that do not have sulfur in them, and this one we just took a bunch of sulfur out and put it in our specimen bag, but the ones that don't have sulfur have a very black center where they have, uh, where it's been very hot. So now we'll move in on this one where there is some sulfur still present. And back off just enough so you can see what we're up to here. And we'll go collect that sample in a bag. Before I started using this knife, it was very, very sharp. Here this is, and we have collected some more, and it's, it smells and tastes like sulfur. Now the Bible tells us that it rained fire and brimstone upon the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now what you see in front of you here is the results of large and small, well varying sized uh, chunks of sulfur, burning sulfur that have hit. And what we find here is that God rained this burning sulfur down upon this city and rain is a perfect description of it. It landed uh, just in a pattern that rain would fall and the stuff of course, the accumulative heat of all of this upon the city set the entire thing ablaze. The uh, flashpoint of every material there, metal, stone, of course the people, and everything burned. And this sulfur continued to burn and it vitrified the material around it after it had uh, 
burned it all up, sealed itself off from the oxygen, and then of course smothered itself out. And in each of these little crystalline capsules here is a varying size chunk of sulfur. And there are millions of these in these ashes that we have here. Now some of them we have cracked open so you can see the sulfur inside and others we have left intact. But there are millions of these here. So this shows that God indeed rained fire and brimstone upon these cities. And if you look in your dictionary under brimstone you'll find that it is sulfur. A piece of the brimstone from the cities was lit at night, and soon there was a beautiful blue flame produced by the burning sulfur. A very strong aroma of sulfur filled the air, and was overpowering if one directly breathed the fumes. Exploring the cities further, more brimstone was found of various shapes and sizes. Several samples had been washed down to areas below and were added to our growing collection. This brimstone is made of monoclinic, white sulfur that has been burned or cooked at a high temperature. It is quite different from natural sulfur that is formed in geothermal areas. Samples were taken to a lab for analysis. Each specimen was carefully separated and prepared for testing, with the outer portion cast aside. Next, the samples were dried and placed in a rock crusher. Then they were pressed onto a disc. Then they were loaded into a machine for the semi-quantitative X-ray analysis. Each sample was individually transported into the testing chamber for analysis. The results proved to be quite amazing. As the samples were found to be 98% pure sulfur, unlike any other sulfur found on Earth. This pure, cooked sulfur is the heavenly marker that was left behind to show the world that the Lord, without a doubt, destroyed these sinful cities at His command. Critics have said that the sulfur is from volcanic activity, but that type of rhombic sulfur is only 40% sulfur and is of a crystalline form, unlike the white, compacted monoclinic form that is found in the ashen cities today. Here is a round piece of brimstone embedded in a section of ash. Another clump of ash contains a piece of brimstone that has a burn ring surrounding the unburned sulfur inside. This mound of material has a lid that easily comes off, revealing the round nugget of brimstone inside. As we gaze across the southern end of the Dead Sea, we can view the El Lisan Peninsula in Jordan. Apparently the city of Gomorrah extended over to this peninsula in the days of Lot. One can find the same white formations in this area. Ashen formations are seen, including walls extending out at 90 degree angles. We can also see clumps of gypsum scattered on the ground, like this one here. Brimstone is also found in this area. Incredibly, a Byzantine-era church was constructed here, as noted on this sign, built here because the area was known for its biblical significance. Back over at Gomorrah proper, we can see white, ashen worship structures built atop an acropolis or high place. Both a sphinx and ziggurat are seen here side by side, much like what we see in Egypt at Giza.
with the Sphinx and the pyramids built in close proximity to each other. While inspecting Gomorrah, other visitors arrived to view the unusual formations. The Sphinx is made of a white material, wider than the ash surrounding it. Perhaps it was built of more expensive components and dedicated to their pagan gods. The Sphinx represented a god of protection, but even it was consumed in the flames. It is approximately 30 feet long and is quite impressive, both in its shape and size. Resting near it is the ziggurat, symmetrical in shape and also comprised of a special white material. Here we can see a ziggurat standing next to a symmetrical tower. Next, we can see an arched door between two pillars and once again, another arched door. As we scan across the city, our eye notices a raised white formation in the distance. As we near the formation, we can see it is in the shape of a ziggurat. It turns out there are actually two ziggurats on this raised Acropolis. As we stood next to one of the ziggurats, our team found perfect specimens of melted brimstone where the liquid from the burning sulfur had cooled down, forming a hard, crystalline shell around the unburned sulfur that was hidden inside. On the outside of the ziggurat, we spotted a piece of brimstone fused into the side of the formation. Using a knife, it was opened, revealing the pure brimstone inside. Resting on a ledge of the ziggurat, we see another sample of brimstone that was opened with a knife, once again revealing the pure sulfur inside. The most impressive evidence was this cremated bone fragment that was left behind from some lost soul of Gomorrah. The bone marrow inside was cooked until it had turned white. This is a moving testimony of God's power to destroy those who reject the Holy Spirit. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. The surface of the earth will be as a lake of fire, with all unrepentant sinners being consumed by fire and brimstone, just as Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. doesn't want you to go to hell. He loves you so much. Listen, God rather die than to see you go to hell. Let me say it again. God had rather die than to see you go to hell. And he proved it on a cross 2,000 years ago when God came in the flesh and shed his blood and died to keep you from going to hell.